In this video, we're going to talk about PV anomalies through cross sections. And so what you're looking at right now is a cross section from the GFS at the latitude 42 degrees. The reason we can see that is that the 42 up here is indicating the latitude. We can see it is from longitudes 220 to 290. This is roughly across the United States in our 0 to 360 realm instead of our uh, negative uh, degrees east components. And so we're going to look uh, briefly at a few cross sections that come from the Octobomb case in 2010. And what we're looking at on this map uh, is the shaded areas RPV, so potential vorticity, multiplied by 1 E6 or times 10 to the 6th to get it into whole values. And you can see that grayscale on the side here. Uh, it starts at 2 PVU, so just in the stratosphere, and then 4, 6, 8, and 10 as we go on up. And so what we're looking at here, if we're looking truly at the 2 PVU surface, so for that first contour of 2 PVU, we're basically looking at the slope of the dynamic tropopause or that transition between the troposphere and the stratosphere. And so we can see over here on the left-hand side of the image, we have a large gradient in that PV surface. And what do we notice is there? Strong winds. Because our other contours here are the V component or the normal component of the wind. Since we are in an east-west cross section here, we are essentially looking at the V component of the wind. And so negative values indicate areas that are coming, wind that is coming out of the page, and positive values are winds that are going into the page. And so what we're seeing here is really strong, because these are in meters per second, winds coming out of the page where we have a very strong jet stream. And this is where we see that slope in the 2 PVU surface, which is exactly where we'd expect if we had a strong temperature gradient below it. But ultimately what we're talking about here are PV anomalies. And so one thing we wanna do is we wanna talk about, okay, well, what does it mean to be a PV anomaly at a, at a given level? So we can kind of put a line, a dashed line here through say approximately 250 mi millibars or hectopascals. And so when we're talking about anomalies, we're looking for regions that have greater PV than the areas surrounding it. And so we see kind of a noticeable PV anomaly right here associated with this strong jet stream. And so we'll go ahead and mark that here as a positive PV anomaly. And so if we have a positive PV anomaly, what do we know to be true about both the static stability and the vorticity around this PV anomaly. That's correct. Both would be increased. And we can sense that here by the fact that our dotted lines are our isentropes, or our lines of potential temperature. And so we see within this PV anomaly, we do have a lot more lines in a smaller area indicating very stable air. And the other thing is increase in vorticity. And here we can sense that by looking at the wind coming in and going out. And so if we consider the wind going in, we can mark that with an X. And so we see that we do have wind going in over here and then with our dot out over here. And so we can see that we definitely get the out. We only get a little bit of the in on this map. Uh, because we have a very broad PV anomaly here uh, that is not too distinct on the right-hand side, but is very distinct on the left-hand side. If we were to do a cross-section in a slightly different way, maybe angled a little bit, we might get a better uh, sense of, of a singular um, vortex here. But we can tell with wind going in on the right-hand side and out on the left-hand side, this is indicative of a cyclonic circulation. And so we see that this positive PV anomaly is inducing a cyclonic circulation, not just at that positive or at that maximum level indicated by the red dashed line, 
but kind of throughout the column. And so this illustrates a little bit this idea of influence depth. So this is for 12 UTC, or this is for uh, October 25th, 2010 at zero UTC. Let's go ahead and look at the next six hours. And so we can see our PV anomaly is evolving here. And we'll go ahead and mark our, our singular level here right around 250 hectopascals. We'll go ahead and indicate our cyclonic rotation. So again, we still have pretty strong out. And we've got stronger into the board now as we get more of a clear, distinct PV anomaly at this level. And so we do still have our positive PV anomaly at this level. Strongest here, where we see that slope in the two PVU surface off to the west, just off the west coast. If we go ahead and move forward another six hours, so now looking at 12 UTC on the 25th, again, we're continuing to see this same pattern evolve. Again, we still have our positive PV anomaly. We have our winds out of the board very distinctly here. And again, we have our into the board generally in this area. And we can see that this is not the only anomaly. We also have some of these other features going on with other smaller anomalies in other parts uh, of this cross section. Let's go ahead and see how the pattern changes in another six hours, so now at 18 UTC. Here we're starting to see a more distinct positive PV anomaly, though over a very broad region. And so again, we maybe have our strongest PV anomaly at 250, right about here. But this whole area here is a broad positive PV anomaly, such that we can indicate wind going in here, which has strengthened with time, and wind coming out here, which is decreased a little bit through time, but it's still pretty strong. And so we can see a less strong gradient in PV across uh, this area, which should indicate that that strength of that uh, cyclonic rotation would decrease through time. And again, we see a minor PV anomaly, positive PV, PV anomaly over here, such that we then also have our into and out of board circulations. Moving forward just another six hours here, we see a more distinct series of anomalies now that go throughout this map. And so here we have our positive PV anomaly, here we have our positive PV anomaly, and here we have a positive PV anomaly. This small one on the east coast here uh, is probably more in indicative of a, of a singular entity uh, than the other two, giving us our clear signal of into the board on the right-hand side and out of the board on the left-hand side. Here we get a pretty strong PV gradient, so we get a pretty strong into the board, a weaker out of the board. And then this broader PV anomaly, we get a weak into the board uh, and still are relatively strong out of the board with that great slope to that two PVU surface. And so we can see that our anomalies aren't necessarily always at a given level, but can vary dependent on, on the various time frames. But by using this, we can really gain a sense of how deep this PV anomaly may be influencing the atmosphere. And so we can see here on this center PV anomaly, we have very strong circulation through the depth of the atmosphere. And we generally have fairly strong out of on the west side of this anomaly. And so we can sense here this entire rotation of the system and also see a little bit of its westward tilt with height. And so we can kind of sense this westward tilt with height because we have our low maybe here near the surface rotating cyclonically, and then our troughs aloft. And so we can see this whole sense of rotation, uh, and that in part it's induced by the fact that we have this strong PV anomaly aloft. I hope this helps to explain a little bit more about PV anomalies and how we can use it to diagnose uh, elements of the atmosphere. 
all of these figures are available for you on Blackboard, and I encourage you to look through them uh, and diagnose these things yourself. Thanks for watching.